Hi and welcome to Excel Quantitative Analysis. QM for Windows. Alright, now that we know how to actually enter constraints and objectives into QM for Windows, uh, we can go ahead and start trying to analyze some of this data and, and really get into what it actually means. So if you have a maximization problem, go ahead and make sure that you uh, label it well so, or I tried to label it well so you guys could understand what exactly it is that I'm talking about. All right, so after you hit solve and you find your solution, let's talk about what some of these values mean. First of all, before we even look at any of the other data, let's talk about values that are slack values, less than or equal to, or a surplus constraint which would be greater than or equal to the right hand side. Alright, so these slack variables SJ they must, the left hand side must be greater than or equal to the right hand side. So this particular objective number one, the advertising budget for these linear programming results would actually be uh, slack. The first three constraints are slacks and then these two non-negative non-negative constraints just meaning that you're going to be in the northeast quadrant of your graph are produce surplus or binding constraints, meaning that it can't be less than zero. You can't not make a table or chair. <laughs> you got to at least produce one of both of those. All right. So that information is probably pretty fairly easy to comprehend at this point. But for those of you that are just beginning, maybe not. All right, let me. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this today. So let's look at our ranging table and our linear program results, our original results compared to our ranging. All right. So what exactly does slack or surplus mean? Because when you look at the ranging table, it has slack or surplus. Well, what is that? Our, well, our advertising budget is clearly labeled. If we look at our inequality for our advertising budget, it is a, a less than or equal to. So we know that that is a slack constraint. That means that this right hand side is going to be the maximum amount of that resource that you have in this case in its advertising budget and we're building large or small developments so the second constraint of square footage we can't build a development that's over 8,000 feet square feet we can't rent more than 60 of our our units due to population all right so that's how we know what slack is, slack or surplus. We know that we have to build at least one of each. So if you wanted to find the amount, if you do have a slack and you want to find the amount that's being used, or what is that formula to find slack? Alright, 
Slack is the amount of a resource. That's your right hand side is your resource. It's the, Slack is the amount of that resource that's used. So you want to subtract your Slack from your original value and that will be the amount of a res resource that you have. Alright, now let's look at corner points. So how many corner points does this particular LP problem have? Alright, we have 0, 0, 1, 60, 0, 2, 30, 40, I'm sorry, 60, 40, which is our optimal solution. So that makes 3, 4, and 5. So there are 5 corner points. You can also see that over here in a table form. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it even shows you the values, what your optimal, uh, I guess in this case, profit would be. So if we move some of the original values, increased or decreased them, say we want to, if we increase square footage, will our profit increase? Will, or will, will this um, optimal solution change or will it stay the same? If we increase our advertising, will our optim optimal solution stay the same? All right, so let's take a go back over to our table forms, your results and your ranging. Okay, if the original value variable changes, our original value of four thousand. If we decrease advertising, can we still maximize profit? As long as our advertising val uh, doesn't go below twenty eight hundred, we're still going to have optimal value. or that optimal solution does not change. So if the original value, I'm sorry, if the original variable changes and still meets that lower, and is still between the lower bound and the original value, the optimal solution doesn't change. Now if the right hand side of a constraint is changed, the feasible region will change. So you can spend, at l you have to spend at least $2,800. You could spend infinity on advertising and that's still going to, but if you increase your advertising budget, your opti optimal solution is going to grow. Your profits are going to grow. There is one exception, and this is important to take note. If a constraint is redundant, your optimal solution will not change. If two of your constraints are the same, they cancel each other out, your constraint is redundant, in other words, your optim, I mean, excuse me, the feasible region would not change in that case. All right, let's talk about one more value, the dual price in our linear program results. What this is saying, uh, not surprisingly, is that advertising budget doesn't have a dual price, but the square footage and the rental limit do have a dual price. And what that means is that when whenever you increase that constraint your profit will increase by the dual price amount so if we decided to change the amount of resource if we uh, of the right hand side if we increased our square footage or we increased our capac rental capacity our profits will change, they will increase by the dual price amount. 